Hi, this is Dr. Patrick Cohn for the Sports Psychology Podcast. Today, I have a special guest. Her name is Natalie Allport. She's a former Team Canada snowboarder. Today, she's a CrossFit athlete, content creator, and a mental advocate for athlete. She also hosts the podcast All In. Natalie is a passionate advocate for mental health and gender equality and shares her story uh, in sports and life with the goal of inspiring others to go all in. Natalie, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I've been a, a big fan of your TikTok. I think it's so cool how you're sharing tips and it's really spreading to a lot of the athletes. Yeah, I know. And that's how we met. We met originally on TikTok. I did one of your videos. You have some great videos on TikTok. Very well done. So um, talk to us a little bit about your story and how you arrived at where you are today. Yeah, yeah. So Cliff Notes version, I grew up playing every sport imaginable. I was like three years old when I told my parents I wanted to go to the Olympics. I think it was the Atlanta Olympics were on and I was riding my tricycle around and around the house. And um, yeah, so I always wanted to be an athlete. I think early on, my dad recognized that I had some like natural skills towards sports. So basically put me in every sport. Hockey was my main one, but I try to do every sport that my school allowed. Like gym class was my favorite. Fitness testing was my favorite. I love just spending all my time outdoors and doing sports. Um, then I kind of, I guess I was about 12. I discovered snowboarding. We were skiing with my family and uh, I noticed like all the cool kids snowboard. So I traded in my skis for a snowboard and then basically never looked back. Surprisingly, snowboarding uh, actually didn't come easy. As uh, athletic as I was in all these other sports that came more naturally, snowboarding was really, really hard, but I just had this passion for it. And I really wanted to pursue it. So uh, yeah, I learned that, kept going, started competing at the local level then uh, regional level, then the national level. And then at 17, I got selected as part of the junior national team and had a great four years part of the national team program. Uh, tried to make the 2014 Olympics. I guess I was about 20 at the, the time. So 2018 was more my trajectory, but I still uh, deal, deal, dealt with a ton of injuries leading up to 2014 and had my shot, signed the Olympic team contract and everything. And unfortunately, um, we just, we only sent two Canadian women um, from the contingency, there's about seven of us vying for those two spots. So uh, missed out in 2014 and then went through uh, a bunch of things with mental health and um, lots more injuries, concussions, different things, and ended up stepping away from the sport of snowboarding in 2015, which is then when I discovered uh, CrossFit and started getting into that. One of the big challenges we see in sports today, especially when we're working with perfectionist athletes, is this idea of social approval. They have a huge antenna up for worrying about what others think. And so today, athletes, well, we look at the Olympics today and we see athletes, you know, they stick microphones right, right after they get out of the pool, they stick microphones in their face and, you know, why didn't you win that one? Yeah. Right? So, so you got the media. Today you have social media, which is rampant. Um, and so how do you curtail that? How do you help athletes deal with that notion about worrying about what others think in our world we call it social approval i think it's really hard especially for young athletes because it's almost natural when you're going through like post puberty you want to you want to kind of stick in with your or fit in with your with your friends with your peers for example like the reason i snowboarded was because it was the cool sport um, so it was part of that social approval of why i wanted to do it and then it also pushed me to the point of when I felt like maybe I don't want to snowboard anymore, I kept going because I was like, I need to prove to these people that doubted me or what they thought. And it's just interesting how we have that in our minds as athletes that we want to prove people wrong. We want to have the approval of these other people um, when it's actually much healthier, I believe, to do things for you. Because if you're just chasing this external social approval, it's a moving target constantly people will tell you, you need to be this. And then that when you hit that, it's going to change and all these things. And so um, I think it's just reconnecting with your true why. So realizing, do I do this sport because I want to prove something to someone else? Or is it because I truly love it? And when you can reconnect with that, maybe journal on it, just take some thoughts about it. Um, I think then if you just refocus back to that, that's the way to kind of to go and, and pursue things from a point of I'm doing this for me and not for anybody else. You know, I think athletes, they worry so much about what coaches think, what parents think for younger athletes, what their peers think. Even I work with athletes that worry about what the fans think. 
people maybe they don't even know or if the family is watching in the stands or something like that so when you were an athlete what what was your main concern who are you trying to gain that approval of was it peers was it family was it coaches or maybe it's all of the above yeah i mean i think all of the above i i'm really lucky i have a, a an amazing family and i they supported me whether i wanted to quit snowboarding or i wanted to keep going so for me it wasn't really the family side but it was definitely all the kids in high school that laughed at me when i said i wanted to be a pro snowboarder it was like i need to prove them wrong especially i grew up um when i, I was bullied for being you know into sports i would beat the boys at the beep test and then they would say i was cheating and um, they would get mad or I play boys baseball and they'd be all mad because I was a really good pitcher. Um, and so I wanted to prove all those people wrong who said that, you know, I couldn't do it because I was a girl or, um, you know, made fun of me because I was different because I was a girl who really liked sports, especially in school. And then it was also the peers. So when I started snowboarding, snowboarding is a, it is fairly judgmental. There's, you know, what, who, what board do you ride? What clothes, what clothing sponsor do you have? Um, your style is judged. It's a judged sport, right? So um, you want to fit in with your peers. You want to be cool and part of the snowboard culture. And so for me, coming from even a different sport background, having played more traditional sports like hockey, I almost felt like even with my peers, I had to overcome that and, you know, fit in as a snowboarder and, and be cool or whatever it was. And, and same thing with coaches, all these things. When I made, after I, I quit snowboarding, I went on a trip to Bali for a month um, when I was going through a really rough time mentally. And um, what I realized the most important part of that trip was, was that I was free of the ex social expectations. Nobody knew who I was, who I was when I was there. Um, any other travel that I had ever done was with coaches, peers, uh, different competitors. So you're always having to put up a front because maybe your sponsors are watching or you have your coaches there. And so you can't ever just truly be yourself and do what you want to do. And so having that weight off was a big moment and it helped me reflect on, wow, this weight of social judgment is, is pretty heavy. So in today's world of the internet and you got social media and everything, I mean, when I competed, we didn't have any of that stuff. We didn't even have computers, right? Um, so it was a lot easier. We didn't have specialization. We were in and out of sports constantly. Parents just dropped you off. They didn't care. You didn't have pushy parents, right? So how does that make it more difficult for athletes today where the results get posted on the internet or maybe it's live stream today um you have pushy parents you have specialization you have so much more expectations for athletes today given the world of you know the internet and social media and how things get posted on social media like i work with one uh division one athlete that you know the naysayers will come out. If he has a bad game, for example, the naysayers will come up. Athletes struggle with that. The fact that there's people that are very negative with them on social media. So it's a different world today when it comes to approval from others, given social media and the World Wide Web. Yeah. Well, back in the day, you could have some naysayers, but they're probably not going to say anything to your face. But now they think that they can just leave a comment and say, oh, we knew you would never make it or whatever it was. I think one, one thing for me, whenever a naysayer comes or whatever, it's like, you're never going to be judged by someone who's doing more than you. So if you're an athlete and you're getting some naysayers, you know, something is going on in those persons, that person's life that for some reason they're cheering for you not to win. It's, it's some sort of comparison they're having to you or whatever, that it's going to make them feel better if you're not doing well. So just keeping empathy, even for those people saying like, okay, well, you know, I'm out here in the arena losing. They're not even in the arena. So just kind of try to keep that out of mind. But I know it can be really difficult um, because those things, you know, they pop up on your phone and you have the notifications or whatever it is. And then there's also the comparison factor. I know a lot of athletes who they actually before competition will unfollow any of their competitors, especially in individual sports, um, because they find, for example, in the sport of CrossFit, they'll be looking and they see someone just post their PRs or their new time in a workout. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, that's stronger than mine, or that's better. And then you start freaking out and thinking you need to train that specific workout or that specific lift, forgetting that there's so many more facets that are in the sport. And so you get tied to comparing yourself to this one other person. So I think it's, it's healthy to maybe just unfollow people or um, just try to create some separation. I know I've actually done that in the past where I find 
I've been scrolling and comparing myself to someone else in a sport and saying, that's not getting me better. So I'm just going to just mute their account for a while, maybe not even unfollow um, and just kind of separate myself from that. And then same thing with the negative comments. If I'm having a rough day, I'm like, I'm not even going to read the comments today because you never know it. Maybe they're going to be all positive, but maybe they could be negative. So I just don't want to even get myself into that mindset where I have to deal with that. If you look at the Olympics today and the expectations that athletes come in all being the best, you know, like Ledecky, for example, and other athletes, they build them up and they have expectations. Your trajectory was just, you know, five years, boom, you know, that's fast, you know, from, from 12 to 17 and being on the national team. Did you have those type of expectations? And then when you're talking with athletes today about mental health, how do you get them to deal with those pressures of the expectation? Be that I think that ties in directly with the social approval issues. Yeah. So for me, I mean, I think like people around me in my hometown, they definitely had some expectations, especially, you know, once I kind of proved wrong, the kids in my school or the ones who said I couldn't, all of a sudden then they became kind of fans. And so they're like, oh, I knew her. Now she's on the, the national team or she's competing here. And so then I felt like, okay, I have this expectation because I've I've said, like, I publicly said, I want to accomplish this. And especially with social media now, um, you, most athletes have publicly said their goals um, rather than before, maybe it's just their internal circle knows about their goals. So they don't have as much of a, you know, a risk of public failure or humiliation. When they don't reach it. But now we probably say, you know, this is my journey to the Olympics and we post about it and we hashtag, you know, road to Tokyo or whatever it is. And then when you don't make it, it's a, a big letdown and you feel like you're responsible for letting these people know why and, and what happened. So for me, it's, it's really hard to even get people to, to publicly put themselves out there and put themselves in that position. For example, I consult a lot of athletes on social media because as much as there is the downside, there's also the positive side of getting sponsors and these things, but they, there is that, that fear when you sign on with a new sponsor, when you put those things out there that you could then fail. And then you feel like you've let down all these more people because you have built that hype around yourself. Um, so I think it is, it's, it's refocusing and saying, okay, these people are here and they're invested in my journey, but it's not their life. Like this is my life and I have to make the best decisions for myself. And, you know, I carry the responsibility of doing well or not, but if I put the effort in, and I think that's what, if you can focus on just putting the effort in every day, whether the results are good or bad, you're going to be, you know, if you're tied to the process, you're going to be happy with that. Um, or at least try to be happy with that. I know it's very difficult when you do lose, but then just saying like these people are invested in me and I'm a hard worker and say that for that, not saying they're invested in me because I'm going to be the champion. Try to tie those things into because of the work ethic I have, because I'm going to give my all to trying to be the champion, whether I make it or not. So I think that process mindset is important. Well, and you mentioned an important point about, you know, publicly stating your goals. Isn't that part of your all in philosophy? I mean, if you make it public, isn't that somewhat of a motivational force to just state the goal? And, and let's definitely say that goals are not expectations. Goals are things you strive for, you put out there, right? But is that, um, is that what you teach in the all in philosophy is it's okay to state your goal publicly. Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, there's been businesses I've started and I fully go, you know, all in. I tell everybody like, hey, this is my new business. Let's do this, this. And then it's it's failed. And I've had to like own that and take that. But I think as you do that in multiple things in your life, it becomes so much easier to do. And that prevents you from holding back of ever going after something. I think a lot of people in their life, it actually holds them back of going all in on, you know, becoming an Olympian or um, starting a new business. They're scared to actually do the things that they need to do to get there, like getting sponsorships, building the story, or actually publicly posting about it to get clients or whatever it is, because they're worried about what if things go wrong. But if they can just do that and then even take a hit, take that failure, they're going to be so much better for it and be able to just keep doing it and realize that that, that public failure or shame, it's not as scary as, as you probably think. Fear of failure can be a motivating force, but it also can be a crippling force for athletes, as you know. So I've been talking with Natalie Allport. You can find her at natalieallport.com, I believe. And why don't you give us your um, TikTok and also your Instagram, because you're doing a great job with the videos and the content there. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, at Natalie Allport, um, that's all my channels. And like you said, natalieallport.com for uh, my website. Awesome. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me.